Nebraska is the second largest producer of ethanol in the country. It's also one of the leading states for cattle on feed. Those two stats have led to a cattle industry that uses ethanol byproducts such as distiller's grains. Since wet distiller's grain has gained an important role in feedlot diets, UNL meat scientists have been trying to see if it impacts meat quality. Earlier this week, we talked with UNL Assistant Professor of Meat Science Gary Sullivan, who said distiller's grains can lead to higher oxidation levels, but those effects can also be counteracted. So there had been a lot of studies that had been conducted here at University of Nebraska, as well as other universities, that have looked at the effect of feeding distiller's grains to cattle and other species uh, as well, but how that impacts fresh meat characteristics. Um, a lot of the impact can be with lipid oxidation and also discoloration of the product during retail display. When we got started looking at this study or talking about the possibilities for the study, not, no one had really looked at cooked meat characteristics. And so we were interested to see if that oxidation effect carried through to cooked products and then also what we could do to help counteract that effect if, if there was one. Why is it important? Why is the oxidation component important? So, when fat's oxidized, uh, the problem is really flavor characteristics. Uh, we get a rancid or off, uh, a rancid or warmed over off flavor that really is uh, makes the product unpalatable, or it it's more of a flavor uh, and sensory quality characteristic as opposed to a safety concern. What did you find here? You looked at wet distiller's grains specifically because wet distiller's grains are a big part of diets here in Nebraska feedlots. Did you find that there was an impact to meat quality? Yeah, so when you look at distiller's grain, especially in the state of Nebraska, the ethanol industry is a huge player. Uh, at the same time, they also use a lot of corn, which we have to replace in the animal diets. And so when we look at ethanol being produced, we're really concentrating the components that aren't used in ethanol. So we concentrate protein and minerals, and then also the fatty acids, or the, the we're concentrating the o corn oil in it. And so when we do that, we actually increase the amount of polyunsaturated fatty acids that we're being fed, and that can carry over into the products. And so when we look at those polyunsaturated fatty acids, they're more prone to oxidation. And so we wanted to carry that through to the cooked product to see of the effect. Uh, when we do feed distiller's grain, both on the fresh side and then also it carries through to the cooked side, we do see an increase in oxidation that takes place. And that kind of makes sense due to the increasing amount of polyunsaturated fatty acids. What about the shelf life of meat? Does that change at all? And so what can happen in the shelf life is in fresh meats, we get more discoloration to take place and then also the flavor tends to deteriorate. In the cooked products, because color isn't as important because we're already changing it during cooking, it's really a shelf life concern. So we shorten the shelf life of the quality shelf life of products. Significantly? Uh, in fresh meats, it tends to be a few days shorter in retail display. In cooked products, we have a much longer shelf life that we look at. Uh, there is significant differences between the diet. Fortunately, we can actually take care of some of that uh, with different processing and ing ingredients that we use. Now, you said that uh, this can be taken care of. So it's, as we said, it's a big part of diets. It doesn't need to be changed. Yeah, we, I'm not promoting or saying we should be taking distiller's grain out of the diet because it's not going to happen. It's not realistic from a st standpoint. Now, it is important for meat processors to understand what their raw material is. Now, this, in a follow-up study that we did, we actually added um, antioxidants to the, com or to the cooked beef products that we worked with. Uh, we actually added, it was a rosemary and green tea extract, and so we can concentrate some of the antioxidant compounds in, uh, in those two components, and we could add it to the product. And when we did that, it actually took out all the dietary effects. And so we were able, no matter how the animals were fed, it, there was a similar amount of oxidation when we added the, amount, the antioxidants. Essentially making it back to normal? Making it back to normal, exactly.